Hello YouTube, Tim here. I've got a nice fresh section of three quarter inch PVC, some actual scraps that I was thinking of using to make a bow, but I'm going to be cutting separate pieces. One of them is going to be 34 inches long, one of them is going to be 48 inches long. I'm going to make two straight bows. I have a friend who likes, or at least at one point in their life, thought that the Native Americans, American Indian archery was pretty cool, so I'm going to try and do something that I think will be pleasing to them. The first of them, with the shorter core, is going to have these on the end, make it easier to taper. I'm going to file it down, and then I'm going to try and taper the tips even more to make a very graceful, relatively straight bow. The other one I'm going to try to use Nick's method, you know, cutting the V out and uh, making the tip that way. We're going to try either way. We'll see what works better, but one way or another we'll have two very nice bows when I'm done. Hopefully the poundage will be somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds, maybe 40 pounds at the upper. And the draw length should be between 25 and I, a 28 inch draw would be nice, but we'll see. I'm not entirely sure we'll get there. Maybe it'll be no problem, but I haven't made a, a straight bow of this length before, so I really don't know. Okay, the first part I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out the blanks. I've already marked where I'm going to heat and cut. The first is the 48 inch one, and that's right here. I w almost always like to mark right on the side with the lettering. It's easy, so that way I can remember, even if I lose track of the mark, oh yeah, it's between the L and the M here on the, the dash, so. Almost there. Here we go. Okay. Actually not as soft as I'd like it, but it's still soft enough to cut. There we go. Now I'm going to cut the other piece. And Truth be told, this is the one you're going to watch me make. I'm not going to make this one right now. I'll probably record it, but I'll put that out separately at another time. So right now, all I need to do is heat right there, and then I'm finished for now. There we go. So there it is. This longer section is going to be the one that I'm... Or, wait, nope. This shorter section is the one that I was going to use because it was just about two inches longer than that. How's that for something? That's cool. All right. Anyway, this middle one here is the one I'm going to be using. These are the ones that I'm not. I'll find another project for them. The first thing that I'm going to do here is insert these two inches from each side so first all we want to do is mark it Let's see if we have a marker handy of course I don't but like I said use the letters for reference it'll be right between the B and the S here on this one right between B and S and two inches is right between 
the logo and the PVC. So that's that's easy enough. I can get it pretty darn pretty darn accurate. I don't know how well it'll work, but I almost want to try instead of heating this and inserting this, I want to try heating this. So instead of expanding this, it'll crush this or it'll fold a little bit. We'll see. Maybe it'll work. With gloves, I could probably force it in. It's what I'd like to try and do, but um, we'll see. Since we're going to flatten it all anyway, I'm not going to worry too much. So now we've got this set. I'm going to go ahead and insert it right to the point that we measured, halfway between there and there. Cool. It looks good. Now let's go ahead and do it on the other side. We've already measured out this one. But let's do it again for good measure. It was between the B and the S's. And it really is smack between the B and the S. In the past, when I've done stuff like this, what I've done is I've gone ahead and flattened everything separately before I put it all together. Right now, I'm going to try it, flattening it just like I would a normal bow stave that just happens to have thinner ends. We'll see. It should be fine. I don't imagine there will be any grave problems that will stem from this, but, but there it is. So right now, the round length is... 49 and three quarter inches, just a shade over that. So my guess is it'll be a 49 inch long bow when we're done, which is pretty close to perfect. This is this is gonna be good. This with two inches inserted on each side. So now let me go ahead and get ready with a flattening jig, and maybe we can test out the new precision flattening jig that I built and see how that works. I'm gonna mark the center and two and a half inches on either side. Aside from that, that's where we'll pick up. Here we are again. All I've done is I've marked the center, true center, two and a half inches on either side. I'm going to give it a go and flatten it all together, and then we'll see how I change and shape the tips.
you notice that I go through a variety of ways of heating it. Sometimes I do little curly cues, sometimes I just move it slowly. That's mostly just to stave off boredom. This gets old really fast, and I am looking at a much faster way of heating it, still using the heat gun. Now that I have a nice precision flattening jig, that'll be the next thing on my list. That and, of course, the chronograph. You guys watching this makes it possible for me to get that, so thank you and I hope the results are going to be worthwhile, worth the wait. I also wanted to say that I already placed orders for some wood and some horn, so now all I need is some sinew and we'll be good to go. That is with the, the horn bows that I was planning on making, the Asiatic composite bows. Let's just focus right here for a second. It's not going to be as big an issue as you'd think. Alright, so now let me go ahead, right here on the floor. I'll go ahead and flatten it. Let me swing the camera around. So just make sure it's nice and straight. I'll try and get it as straight as possible. You're never going to get it perfect, but that's what correction after the fact is for. But I'm still not using my flattening jig. That's okay. is a project on the table and I'm very excited to be getting that ready for y'all. And in other news, weather has been spectacular here in Kansas for the last few days. So uh, I'm going to be going outside shortly before it gets too hot in the afternoon and taking a few other videos including shooting the, uh, the Penobscot style bow. I did a build along which I'll be posting shortly and then the, uh, the actual shooting of the, the bow will follow that as opposed to the building following the shooting which makes no sense. Check for straightness, just look at it. If it looks straight, you're good. If it doesn't, you can correct that more or less now. Well, it's still warm. Go ahead and continue flattening it. It's looking great, but it will move up the limb a little bit now. Oops, that's too far up the limb. Right there. This is going to be perfect. Yeah, just great. It's going to transition from a, a wide limb to almost round. The handle will be flattened a little bit. It's not going to be under very much stress, so that should be okay. I'm 
very used to making short bows this short and shorter, but typically they're recurves. This is not going to be a recurve. At the very most, I might introduce just a little tiny, tiny bit of reflex and deflex, just a teensy little bit, just to give it a little bit of shape. And, and if anything, maybe a little bit of reflex near the mid limb area. We'll see. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do yet. But so far, so good. It's really kind of cool. The junction of the, the two is interesting. I'm going to run them under cold water and I'll show you. Okay. So as you can expect, I guess this really should have been kind of an obvious thing. When it flattens, this had to be inside the other pipe, so the half inch pipe was going to be compressed more here. But then it was going to be compressed the same amount out here, not constrained by this this pipe. So of course, that makes perfect sense. I guess if I really wanted to, I could go back and reflatten this whole section. But since I was thinking of reheating it and shaping it and doing something anyway, we're just going to leave it as is for now. So far, so good. I can't say that was the best way to do things, but it's certainly not the worst. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other limb. I don't need to show that since I think you can imagine how that's going to go at this point. And then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. I may go ahead and shape the tips and turn it into a working bow before I scrap that and start over. And since I'm only using 10 inches of half inch PVC on each side, it's not like it's a big loss, even if I just remove them entirely. All right. All right, a little update. Right now, here is the bow. As you can tell, it folded right where you'd expect it to. I was hoping it would at least be drawable like this, but ultimately there was too much stress right here. So I will puff this whole area up and change the tips a little bit. I'm gonna try, I would like to keep them as pin knocks because that's fairly traditional, but we will have to modify the junction between the, the thin half inch pipe and the full three quarter inch pipe. That said, let's get down to that. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do that and show you the results. And yet again, here we are, but this time I have something positive to show you. Let's go back over here where we're flattening things and I'll set it down. Okay, I went ahead and I re, I just puffed up the juncture, so that stiffened that area. Now take a look at that. It's a nice even bend throughout the limb. I like it, I like it a lot. That's pretty darn good. Taking a look at it from the side, it's hard to say if, if the tiller is a lot stronger on one side than another. I would say this one might be marginally stronger. Yeah, it looks marginally stronger, but it's not a huge, it's not a huge difference. Let's see if I can just take this ca the camera up and show you as close to top down as I can. So far, so good. That's a really nice arc, and that's exactly what I wanted. I didn't want it to have uh, overly stiff tips, which is why I didn't want to flatten them front back. If I flatten them, that is side to side, if, if these sias were facing this way, they'd be dramatically stiffer, and they wouldn't bend. Now, they just bend proportionally. These aren't glued in yet, so I have to take them out, and I need to glue them. Now that I'm comfortable with that, I just need to make sure they don't come out. Unless, of course, this would be a takedown. I'm not sure. I guess I could always try it, but drawing parts when they're not glued in makes me a little nervous, even if I'm fairly confident they won't pop out. I really don't like risking it. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to glue them in. And it's only meant to be drawn about 25 inches. We'll see how it turns out. I think uh, I'm going to call this a success so far. It's a very nice light bow. And it should be fairly characteristic of a Native American style uh, short bow.